Hey, um, so it's been a while since I put another video out. I thought I would uh, do some more work on the Chacon. I've done a little bit more practice on it, but uh, and decided on you know what I'll what I want to play, which parts and pieces. But I had a few other things come up in the last couple of days. Um, one of the cool things I did was recorded a video for a global accordion orchestra project. That's driven by Ian Watson, who's a composer and the conductor of the London Accordion Orchestra. Um, he selected his, one of his works, uh, uh, titled Peace, and we recorded to the video. Uh, everyone had parts, and we sent it in, and it will be compiled. It's, well, it's being compiled now, and it will be released live on Facebook, I believe on the London Accordion Orchestra's website, uh, uh, Facebook page, on the 3rd of April, so four or five days from now, depending on where you are, your time zone. So, yeah, that was really cool. And now back to Chacon. I'm looking at the fourth variation, and it's quite nice. Um, oh, everything's quite nice at the Chacon. <laughs> um, it's a really nice little motive here. Uh, obviously we have the, again, we have the, each, we have a motive of, of four bars, and it's a descending tetrachord, D, C, B, flat, A. And that's what Bach uses. And a lot of the times this motive, it's repeated twice, and it's paired as um, in eight bars. And for that reason, Semenov, uh, in his version, labels in variations. Um... So we'll use that terminology for now. The Variation 4 has a theme of four notes. And then a response. Then four notes. Uh, I can't read that far away. That's the first four bars, and then it goes to a, the solo. Okay, so because of the, let me actually, ch I'll bring up Brahms's, uh, sorry, uh, Bach's version just to double check that what I say it's. Uh, correct, violin partita, should be the uh, first page, um, sorry about this, I should have had this all very prepared, so by 33, second page, yeah, okay, so there is no... There's nothing on the on that little solo line. In the original score, there's no polyphonic material at all. So Simonoff and Lips use the continue a little half of the motive, the response. So we have this. Then we have this answer. Or as a chord. So for the violin solo, he, they, Lips and Simonoff both continue. Okay. But Bassoni actually did a lot more than that. He took the complete four-note motive and doubles it in the bass. With the response. Okay, so that's what I kind of want to do. There will be a few issues with that because of the uh, the difference in touch and response of the bass versus the right hand, of, and obviously having a solo melodic line with the accompaniment chords can overpower it quite easily. So we'll look into that. The first issue, though, is we have this... Uh, let me move back a bit so you can see. We have this... Uh, melody just played staccato with chords underneath it and the chords aren't moving 
and we have the huge jump. Response, huge jump. Second time motive, huge jump. Huge jump. Huge jump. Huge jump. Huge jump. Uh, sorry, that's a G. And then the solo. So, that's the big problem with this. We have a nice... Um, nice melody and response. Problem is that we have a large jump and we don't have enough time to really take care of this. If we try to make this ending beautiful of this G sharp, release softly, then we have to jump there quickly to be in time. It's very, it's a bit of a panic. So how do we solve that? Uh, I have to cheat a few ways. We can't really release the end of this four bar, four note motive with the bellows. Uh, we have to release with the fingers and a certain movement. So to find this movement, uh, there's a few things. One is we have this, that's the last position, then a jump. So we want to cut that jump down. That's a tenth of if I play with the thumb. That's horrible. I don't want to do that. So I want to change. Two, three, five instead. Two, three, four. And I want to start moving my thumb. If I can move my thumb up to the E flat, which is my stretch, that means I have E flat to B flat. I have that fourth. I'm only moving the thumb a fourth instead of that big tenth. If I don't, if I keep it there, I still have an octave. So I need to trick myself and think, okay, we're beginning down, we go down, and we're moving up to that jump. Change. Okay, and that was the second problem from one. We've got to go back down again. And if we, if we rush that jump, that first note of the second phrase is going to be quite harsh when we want that to be as beautiful to take a little bit of time musically so how do we do that we have to think that perhaps how do we go down so that chord actually expands uh, down and up. So we have G sharp, A, B flat, A, uh, and then we have F, E in the middles. So we either have it that we think it's both expanding, coming down, or going up. So I really want to emphasize that it's going up. Now, even though that movement of the higher voices is just three, four, obviously I don't have to move at all. But it's not to move on for that note, it's to move for the preceding notes, like we did moving to go high, uh, up the keyboard, we go down to move down the keyboard. So we're anticipating where we need to go well before we actually have to be there. Okay, so in that position there, it's really difficult to find a G on the keyboard uh, if you don't have time. If you have time, you can find the F sharp. You know, there's two notes, two white notes here to go to E flat. If you go down, it's easy to find an F sharp. If you're going up, it's quite hard. You have to kind of guess if you have a C, then it's easier because you have that kind of position. That's a, that's a fourth. But if you don't have any of those positions just yet, you should be looking for what other notes you can search for. Oh, 
Okay, so that C sharp is the savior. That's that's what's going to guide me to that G. Because like I said, that's a fourth tritone. It's so just a little bit wider. So now I can kind of predict where the G will be. Search for that. Okay. And then the G, I'm not sure. The high G, if I should use a fourth. Let me just have a... Because the problem is I'm the fifth finger here. I don't know. Would it be easier to... So do I want to go five, five, or five, four? Because that might be stronger. But I kind of like to do five, four on that chord because it feels semi-legato. It gives the effect. What did I do wrong there? Uh, uh, so here, here I have to actually think a little bit because we have I have to go up again. So we have this big jump. So it might seem quite strange that I'm focusing quite a bit on fingering, but when you have these jumps and not many reference points, it becomes very, very important. Uh, especially when you have a um, ending of a motive, it's vital because you're preparing, in fact, the start of the next motive. And if you have a weakness before the start of something new, it's going to always be a problem when it comes to, to playing in the concert. So I have to take the time now. Okay, I think I was incorrect to think of just the tritone, the C sharp G. To really release that E and just have an octave in my fingers. So most people I hope understand have an octave in their fingers. You should feel comfortable kind of and know little positions. So a third, fourth, fifth, fifth, eighth, sorry, uh, sixth, seventh, flat, um, like so that would be flat, just to know exactly and that was, that's an octave. Yeah. So, I'm going to use that C sharp as a guide. Oh, perfect. And then, as a guide, and that's my octave. Triton guide, boom. So that's the... So if you get rid of it, you can kind of come back to it pretty quickly. Okay? So, most people unconsciously will have these positions in their hands. They've just got to trigger them, uh, find a way to... So for me, that fourth is just that C sharp, we'll get the octave of G. It's all a bit fresh. Uh, what movement do I need? Okay, 
So what I was doing then, I was fiddling through and trying to work out in my head, is I was thinking, how does that fifth finger travel? And just travels straight down the keyboard. Uh, not to release it, not to move across, not to have it like a position in the black notes, out of the black notes. It's really, as soon as I play, sorry, that E, I want to have that move completely. I don't what now want to be searching for that C sharp, because if I do that, it contorts my hand, and my fifth finger is going to invert into the note. Just go in between the notes, and that's going to be hard to find the G, because I have to go over the black notes now. Uh, sorry, did you see that? I, I did that, and then I had to come all the way around, and of course, press the wrong notes. So, concentrate to... Over. Okay. So when I play the bass, that's going to help a lot because it's going to maintain the bellows and going to maintain that movement. Okay, resolved. So now we're going to add the bass. Uh, I can't read it here. Sorry. I have to move a little bit closer now to actually see the notes. Okay, so not the perfect touch. Uh, need to focus on that a lot. I want to have a much more beautiful um, different articulations with the, the motive and the response of the motive. But positions are working pretty well. The movements aren't fully developed yet. See, as you can see, I'm not... I have to have confidence on the bass notes, I believe, to move onto the bass notes with the right hand. Okay, so that works. So the trick is, go down to prepare the chords, moving up, as I make the jump, move onto the bass notes with the right hand, and I, when I say that, I mean the body is positioned that way to pull to the bass, come down and move to the jump, and then repeat that uh, four times, pretty much. So have confidence on the bass notes and not to be a little bit too heavy. Uh, I wasn't prepared because I didn't start right. That's really bad practice. I should stop doing that because now I'm doing I'm trying too many things. So after I, I found the solution, it's a little bit too complex to, to be focusing on all these things. So now I'm just gonna try and focus on how it responds to the bass. practice the movement separately of the right hand and then I have to practice it onto the left hand and that should resolve every problem. Cool. Okay, second part. Is there an extra note? So I was just deciding which notes to, to play because it's not written on the score. So I won't do it. Oh, okay, so here we have this beautiful. 
And then we have this theme, the motive, and the response in the bass. So the problem is the bass doesn't respond like the right hand. We have this. So I really need to feel this B flat A G sharp. D. Okay, so I want to discover a little position on the bass end. No, the problem is two notes, th three notes. Three notes will want to be louder, so I have to really control that. Obviously, I need this. But not too much. Luckily, the right hand's going to hide a few things, the articulation of the bass, but it's going to be heavy if I let it. very light on the bass so instead of pushing the notes down fully we would have that sound I kind of want so I'm still pulling but I'm depressing the notes by just a couple of millimeters <laughs> uh, maybe I can change no So that's what I want to do. I want to have the focus on the third note of the fourth. So that A, G sharp. The B flat's going to be sound a little bit louder than the uh, first note because it's two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. But I want to have bum 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 and die away. So the focus will be. I don't know if that touch will work with the right hand just yet. Mm, it's not exactly what I'm envisioning. The notes are there, but... It's not the right style. So I'll come back to that, I think, in a little bit. I'll work on the... I think releases... way to create the right articulation will be on the release of the right hand between the bass notes. Oh, sorry. So when 
you change how you play something drastically, you lose all um, muscle memory. So that's what I'm trying to control right now. No, I want to die down the bass. is to make the first note a little bit shorter on the bass. Okay, so I actually have to listen to the recording uh, myself to see which style I like that um, those bars because obviously when I'm trying different things I'm thinking and uh, listening but not listening as closely so I'll play back this video and listen to what I like and then make a decision so gee that's like 25 minutes so that's quite a long video um, but I think good practice a few decisions made and solutions as well, which is cool. I uh, just have to really make sure that this touch is together. So that's another way to do it. Play those parts, to, uh, the motives that are four bars apart together, and try and find the same articulation, and then that will translate across. So that will be my practice for now. Hope you enjoy it. Catch you later.